So we're going to start off today talking about the early Renaissance in Northern Europe. Unlike Italy that we looked at last week, which has a very high population density and change happens very rapidly, in Northern Europe the population is much more spread out. The Gothic started and was well established there, so change is much slower and the Gothic styles tend to hang on for much longer. One big influence in Northern Europe is the idea of iconography. And on its simplest level, iconography is a kind of symbolism. We're interpreting something as standing in for something else. But when we reference iconography in art history, we're specifically referencing the idea that these symbols are related to the culture and the everyday lives of the people who created works of art. So we use a lot of these same shortcuts in our day-to-day -day lives. So for instance, how somebody dresses or the kind of car they drive might stand in for their hobbies or their lifestyle as they move through their life. And through study and research, we can do the same thing with works of art. We can try to understand how more subtle details, not just obvious things, might have been communicated to the original audience by the artist based on the symbols in the painting. And probably the most famous example of this in Northern Europe in the early Renaissance period is this painting that we call the Arnolfini portrait or the Arnolfini double portrait. This was painted by the artist Jan van Eyck in 1434. And for many years, we thought we knew exactly what this was, that it was a wedding portrait. After all, there's a lot of things about this that seem to be basically like a wedding. The bride, if we look closely, she isn't actually pregnant, but she doesn't look like she's pregnant. She's holding her dress folded up over her abdomen in a way that mimics the shape of a woman's body in pregnancy. We also see that they are in their bedroom. We can see the bed back here behind them. And if we look in the detail, we can see that on the chair post is an image of St. Margaret. So St. Margaret is the patron saint of women in childbirth. So those details seem to support the idea that this is about marriage and about family. However, in the 20th century, as artists started to look into this painting more closely, they started to argue that the iconography doesn't really, as conclusively, support this idea of the marriage as we thought. And as this painting was researched further, we also start to see that this idea of a marriage is possibly slightly more problematic. The person who we think is the male figure in this painting, a man named Giovanni Arnolfini, wasn't married until 13 years after this painting was made. That would be an incredibly long engagement, even today, and would have been very unusual in the early Renaissance period. It's possible that he was married once before, and his early marriage and his first wife just didn't get recorded in history. Unfortunately, that happens pretty frequently with women. However, some art historians also think that this image may represent a kind of contract. So when we look closely at the iconography, some of this symbolism is more ambiguous or harder to interpret. So some of the other symbols or objects that are talked about as having iconographic symbolism in this painting are in the chandelier. We see that this is a very elaborate chandelier with room for four candles, possibly six, but it only has one lit candle. This is usually interpreted as being a sign of God's watching or God's witness in the late Middle Ages. Below that, we have the signature of the artist, and Van Eyck sans, signs this, Jan Van Eyck was here. So it's already slightly unusual to have the artist's signature so prominently placed in the middle of the painting, but we have other signatures from Van Eyck, and we know that he typically signs his work as Jan Van Eyck made this. 
So this alternative phrasing and the prominence of the signature seems to suggest that he may have been a witness for either a wedding or a contract. Below that, we have a mirror. And this kind of polished metal mirror was common at this time, although still an expensive luxury item. But specifically the shape of the frame and the images from Christ's passion in the small roundels in the frame, again connect this to the idea of the eye of God or the fact that God is watching. Altogether, these images make it less clear what the meaning of this kind of painting should be. Some art historians do still think this is a marriage. Some think it's a contract. Some think that it has some other purpose that we don't know or don't understand, or that even possibly we've misidentified the figures who are being represented here. Ultimately, iconography is only possible through significant study and significant research, and even then it can be difficult for us as modern people to understand what the people of the original painting took for granted or understood automatically. So we can only try our best to understand that iconography.